Hello class. Today we're talking about scientific and technical illustration and we're starting off with a piece that's on the screen which is by Michelangelo uh, done in the probably 1550 or so. Uh, it's out of a sketchbook and it's an anatomical study of a male figure uh, from the side and also from the back. The um, evidence is such that he most likely had either a dissection of a live or live pardon me a dead <laughs> dead subject or um, uh, you know a flayed image of some sort that he was working uh, from he um, couldn't do these uh, with the uh, blessing of the church so a lot of these were done in secret and probably never shown however they are evident when it comes to looking at the uh, the pieces that he created for the church and the uh, anatomical accuracy that his painting and, and the sculpture um, just has. I mean, he, he was a scientist, and this is evident. Likewise, this is a, a dissection uh, by Leonardo da Vinci. Um, and again, I have it laying on its side, uh, mainly because it was a vertical piece, but I wanted to zoom in real close and just look at all those uh, organs and so on. You see the heart, um, kidney, spleen, the uterus. Uh, these are um, evident of dissection. And uh, he, again, he had to do these sort of things in secret. And uh, there, was, there was no blessing from the church again. So um, handwriting is written in backwards. Um, there were certain codes um, used that that um, I don't mean the da Vinci code however I do mean um, as far as the language that he used um, was was cryptic um, we're jumping ahead into the uh, beginning of our, our United States and here's a submarine design by Robert Fulton um, very early uh, 1798 uh, and basically this is a patent drawing of a piece of equipment and it's a hand cranked submarine uh, with a sail capability also once it's surfaced very technical um, letters are used to um, coincide with um, items at the top so if you look at the A point over there on the left hand side of the um, Nautilus you'll just go up to where A is and it says body of the boat so uh, it's easy for us to to look at these little notations and know exactly what he's talking about <clears throat> this is a uh, piece by uh, George Waterhouse who worked with uh, in conjunction with Charles Darwin and um, he went on the voyage of the Beagle to the Galapagos Islands and these are some of his na natural studies of uh, animals and they were then brought back and the drawings were then uh, turned into etchings so there's actually a, another hand that's involved here which would be the etcher uh, the person who actually created this uh, for ink and plate uh, likewise uh, a female artist named Elizabeth Gould uh, did a lot of work for uh, the Darwin studies and here's um, some little parakeets that she's drawn uh, she's also known for um, a lot of work in the uh, Australia, uh, I'm not sure if New Zealand's involved, but Australia in particular, um, the wild animals there. And back in the United States, we have James Audubon, uh, perhaps our most famous uh, naturalist. And uh, these are blue jays, wild blue jays. I guess it looks like they're ransacking some sort of eggs. But uh, as a naturalist, I mean, he would, you can tell that these were done most likely from dead birds. Uh, the way that this uh, main blue jay in the center is splayed out, that's a very unnatural sort of posture for a blue jay, but um, very easy to uh, make them do that when they're dead. And uh, he would draw from that. 
Thomas Aikens. Now, I am including Thomas Aikens here because he was also along the same lines of uh, Michelangelo and Da Vinci, where uh, ac for the uh, academic, um, he was very interested in precise anatomy. And this uh, painting in particular is a very large piece. It's uh, roughly eight feet high. Um, it used to be at the uh, Jefferson uh, Hospital College, a college in uh, Jefferson University in um, Philadelphia. And I believe it's now also, um, it's owned by the Museum of Art, Philadelphia Museum of Art. And it depicts um, Samuel Gross, a uh, world famous um, doctor at the time in the 1850s, uh, doing an operation in front of um, a room full of students. And uh, if you look there on the lower left, you'll see the, the, the poor mom or wife of the person who's being operated on is cringing in, in uh, just pain. However, this, this piece was um, just showing the cutting edge of um, medicine at the time. And uh, Aikens is very much um, touting his city as a, as a training center for, for great doctors. Um, he entered this in a, uh, I think it was the 1876 exhibition, and um, it was a little too gruesome for the crowd, so they actually didn't include it with the art, they included it over with the Science Center. So uh, that's why I'm including this in Science and Tech. It is very much a, um, a snapshot of science in action. Last week I mentioned Beatrix Potter of... Peter Cottontail fame and Mr. McGregor. Well, here is one of her bug studies done for a um, science journal, and it's gorgeous. You can just see the uh, exquisite detail that she renders. Um, down in the lower left and right, there are just close ups of that bug's mandibles and other little parts, little hairs, and so on. Uh, she's just got the touch and um, what she was able to bring to life as far as her animals go with uh, her whimsical pieces uh, she equally is able to render here with scientific accuracy uh, the Wright brothers this is a uh, technical drawing of the Wright brothers flyer one of their flyers. I don't see a motor on this one, so I believe it was just a glider that they invented. But again, it's a um, it's a technical uh, patent drawing. Um, all the numbers that are involved here uh, coincide with a paper that supports it and uh, can be referenced. Um, oh, I have this one mistitled. It is not Alex Schlomberg. This is uh, Rube Goldberg. Uh, Reuben Goldberg, uh, 1883 to 1970. Um, this is his one of his famous machines. Uh, it was basically a comic, but uh, because of the complexity um, that he went through to make his comics, I consider this scientific. And these machines would do things like this one in particular is to a napkin wiper for the face, which if you read the last line there, uh, after the meal, substitute a harmonica for the napkin and you'll be able to entertain your guests with a little music. Um, Rube Goldberg was a uh, engineer trained at UC Berkeley, um, but he went into uh, creating comics for newspapers and um, actually won a Pulitzer Prize for his political uh, commentary via comics. Uh, but he's most famous for creating these crazy machines. And in fact, the term, uh, it's a real Rube Goldberg uh, as far as um, any sort of invention goes. It just means that it's very complex and maybe over-engineered. This is Alex Schlomberg. Now, Schlomberg I'm including because... Uh, he was a scientific illustrator. However, um, I consider this period of time, the mid, uh, late 40s, uh, mid 50s, uh, to be conceptually scientific as well as science fiction. Um, a lot of these ideas of spacesuits and uh, space flight and robotics and what does 
the uh, atmosphere on another planet look like? How, how must we dress in order to encounter the extremes of temperature and radiation? Uh, science relied on science fiction in a lot of ways, and science fiction illustrators. A lot of these fellows uh, doubled, not only uh, for science fiction, but also for science journals. And Al Schlomberg is just one of those guys that, that is the epitome of that. Likewise, John uh, Berkey, who you may know of from um, Star Wars posters. Uh, I think he also did King Kong from the 1977 King Kong. He did that poster. Uh, but Berkey is also, in a sense, a science concept artist. And this particular piece um, is called Colonies in Space. So as far as conceptualizing what the future may bring uh, with scientific items to back it up. Uh, it, it's this gray area where science and science fiction merge and it, as far as concepts goes, um, you need a scientific-like background, a technical background, in order to project what uh, future science may lead towards. Uh, Murray Tinkleman, who was an instructor of mine, uh, this is one of his fanciful uh, animal machine mergers. Uh, as you can see, the technical detail is unbelievable. He really gets into it. He's got uh, pieces of motors in there and cogs, uh, tank tracks, pieces of watches, uh, locomotives, and in the midst of that is a it looks to be a Asian rhinoceros. But uh, Murray works with a very, very fine pen. I forget how many, I think it might be like a 3-0 or 4-0 pen. The finest uh, rapidograph they made at the time. I don't believe they make uh, rapidographs anymore, but it was super, super fine. What you might equate to a micron these days. Uh, likewise, another fantastic artist who's just recently left us, and that is Kazu Sano from San Francisco. Um, his work can be seen in National Geographic as well as movie concept posters, uh, various various publications throughout the world. And this is a, a piece from the National Geographic dealing with uh, obviously a dinosaur. George Walker. Uh, George Walker is a uh, designer from the mid 50s or so. Uh, I believe he passed in early 90s. But this is a hover car. And if you look closely, you'll notice that it's similarity to the Ford Thunderbird. And that's because Walker actually designed the Ford Thunderbird. And uh, he also did the industrial design for clocks and bread boxes and bicycles and roller skates and whatever else came along. He was a, a scientific illustrator. But this is his concept of a hover car. Uh, Thomas Chipley, who lives right down the road from me, uh, he's an illustrator who's done hundreds and hundreds of technical illustrations as well as some real fancy, uh, fanciful um, automobiles. His work is really great. Um, but Chipley. Uh, has done a lot of work uh, dealing with aviation models and so on. And this is one of his technical drawings for a magazine. Chip Foose. Now you may watch uh, one of the sh those automobile shows on A&E or whatever those channels are, but Chip Foose is a uh, car designer. And I believe he also has illustration, um, excuse me, uh, automobile tire or, and wheels and so on that are uh, under his name but this is a uh, technical illustration of an automobile by Chip Foos. I figured I'd include that because it's it's conceptual. Uh, Marie Downheimer now she's a, a friend of mine who does medical illustration and uh, this is some muscle groups in the shoulder, and they're very technical. But Marie has learned her craft by going through the John Hopkins program. And um, she had a cadaver that she worked off of for, for years. And that person uh, gave their body to science. And literally, Marie 
went ligament by ligament by bone by bone drawing and documenting that person's body and this is a uh, scapula and uh, here we have a we see a tear listed there um, and it's scientific illustration this is about as close as I get to scientific illustration and it's very designy as you can see it's flat and graphic um, I used a pose from a friend of mine who was uh, had from a photograph and uh, you can actually see where their cuffs of their shirt hang out but uh, this was done for a, um, a journal dealing with uh, chiropractic and uh, although it's uh, a tough subject to deal with um, as far as how to explain what this item is it's um, I did the best I could and the, the client really liked it so hey their check didn't bounce and I was smiling at the end of it um, Feng Shu uh, he's a uh, conceptual illustrator uh, and I'm including him even though this looks very science fiction uh, mainly because his work is used within the gaming industries and uh, movie industries but he's coming from a real place which is he looks at real objects um, both from nature and from history and from industry and then applies those uh, into a, a merger that creates something brand new um, they're brand new but they're familiar they have scale you can you can place yourself within the drawing and you can actually see someone using these items they look like physics would still behave the same um, Fang really does strive for accuracy and uh, a sense of being there these are really really well done uh, these in this concept stage um, these are presented to a client the client says yeah well, let's go with number three and number two and um, then these are handed off to a 3d designer and that person would then build build the items within th uh, 3d realm and uh, they could be used for a movie or for a uh, gaming structure so scientific and technical illustration are our focused on a precise depiction of the natural world manufactured goods and conceptual speculation um, so it's things that are uh, things that are being made right now or proposed to be made and things that are hopefully going to be made in the future uh, they are labor-intensive with accuracy and exacting detail as their main concern. Um, I have a close friend who talks about one of the most stressful jobs he ever had was working for a uh, scientific publication, drawing a very, very tiny fly and uh, putting the wrong number of hairs um, or the hairs coming out of the wrong section of its back. It was very, very stressful for him in particular because uh, it was his first job doing that but uh, accuracy and exacting detail were exactly what they wanted these have a long shelf life uh, as patents as textbook items and as conceptual documents so they will stick around uh, even think about gaming I mean people keep the games and they see your work over and over again they're executed in all mediums but uh, rendered with extreme care there's no use for artistic self-expression other than how cleverly the subject is displayed so uh, you can't just start laying in brush strokes willy-nilly they have to be exactly as the structures are that you are depicting these are commissioned by book companies scientific interests concept studios film and gaming companies so there are a lot of areas that use this type of illustration both scientific and technical and I uh, think the works out there but again you really do have to hunker down and do your best to, to get these jobs you have to have a heck of a portfolio and um, be willing to spin your your work out very quickly um, they're mid to high paying depending on what your uh, rate is and and what your speed is and what kind of name you build for yourself however um, you can really make a living at it so 
uh, scientific and technical illustration, technical illustration, it's worth a look.